Hello, <clears throat> I'm Levi Palmer. I'm a senior at Penn College of Technology um, in the Automation Engineering major. I am making this video to show the potential of Ignition, a newer SCADA offering. They've been around for a couple of years, but they're getting really popular. So and it's really good to actually interact with the IoT, you know, the different layers of the stack, the automation stack. So. Um, yeah, this is a home page. This is a basic web browser. This is from pers the perspective model. I have an image, you know, basic title screen, nav, doc, all that. One of Ignition's strengths is definitely how easy it is to configure. Making a nav doc like this was relatively easy. And there can be transferred between pages, all that. You can create, you just find types. Um, this is HMI, as you can see. This is just a very basic HMI of the temperature for the thermocouple right now i'm touching the thermocouple as the heat gets uh, hotter it ends up getting setting an alarm it can make you flash it has it listed on the right this is just a very powerful tool to have it all connected and you can it, ignition makes it very easy to connect it but this is just a thermocouple obviously in an actual production or industrial setting you'd have a lot more involved with an hmi you might have a motor, whatever, VFDs, all that hooked up to it. But just, to, I'm not sitting in an industrial environment, so there's no need to go that in depth. Returning to the nav doc, we can end up looking at the other menus. The sub menu, this is a sub menu, but the main menu um, under alarms, this is the alarm status screen. This is more immediate alarms, what is happening at this time, if it's acknowledged, if it isn't acknowledged, all that. This is immediate as of what's not working or what's incorrect now. Um, the alarm history tab revolves more around history. It's, it's in the name, but um, the journal is definitely a useful tool. This is all drag and drop and just pointing it to the correct thing, which is incredible. You can sort it. You can do all that. It's great. Um, the alarm history is much the same way if you look at it. Um, but opening it, you can, as you can see, you can clear the, um, and so show certain types of alarms depending, but yeah, going to alarms history, this just shows you, you can have multiple pages, all that, you can see that at the bottom, but there are a lot of different, um, features you can do with that. There's data pruning, so it'll get rid of prune, uh, data after a certain amount of time, if it's a year, two years, whatever. You can partition it, you can do all that. It's super powerful software. It will go back large stretches of time. Obviously right here, it's just like short because I didn't have the PLC hook done before this morning, but it'll show everything, which is super powerful and useful, you know? Being able to look at alarms from months or years ago to see how, to see, look at whatever um, pattern so you can uh, make smarter systems is definitely important. It's a start of making a system <laughs> integrated and intelligent. This screen is a gateway where everything is configured from. It's where everything is connected. It's a back end. The perspective module is the visual, the HMI portion, but this is the, the nitty gritty of the device connections, having everything connected. Um, that's a database, obviously, but, you know, having the databases, devices, servers, whatever, having all that. Your alarm is controlled from here, partially. There's also some of the designer um, launcher, but this is all important. I have a Click PLC from Automation Direct hooked up, which is um, fairly easy. It's via IP, same as Siemens. Um, but over here, you can see all you have to do is hook in the IP, fairly easy. Go into PLC, figure out what it is, plug it in, not not too difficult. And then there's a lot of different settings that most of the times aren't necessary. This was important, the reverse word order though, because um, the floating points came in backwards. The two bits did not come through correctly, which is a problem. The, the Siemens one is nowhere, it was super easy though. They support tag browsing, so it was even easier than the click. It was very... Um, quick to check um, But uh, back to the device connections you can look for um, Click it's not doesn't support tag browsing which means you can't 
just go through and pick out tags and look through all the tags. You have to import specific ones, so you have to do it via Modbus connections or Modbus address, which if you go into Click Software um, and drag it out under, it'll display the Modbus address. So then you just plug the Modbus address in and make sure it connects, and then it should be easy. Then you can um, test it with a quick client and all that. But this is a, it's fairly easy to navigate. Most this is the hardest a PLC is going to be because an Allen Bradley or Siemens would be plugged in a lot easier. Their interface better. The oddball PLCs, you know, Mitsubishi, TI, whatever, Click are all going to be harder to configure. They're not going to be that hard. This will take you five minutes to plug in addresses and make sure they work. But if you do have, you know, hundreds of hundreds of tags in a click or whatever, it's going to end up being pretty tedious. So that's a point whenever, um, do it, making it correct, um, making it import and tag browsing, making so you don't have to import, you can support browsing is going to be great, but you can't always do that. Um, yeah, that's a device connections overall. Then this is a quick client I was talking about. You can go down here, look at the devices drill down to it and then the you have the different options where you can read and write or subscribe to it so then you can read it'll tell you if the quality is good what the value is you can write to it for a floating point i'm not gonna end up writing to it but for a boolean it's easy to write you can pop it up type in false depending on it you can force it'll auto detect it it's a very smart software you don't have to define it or anything that's a super useful to, to troubleshoot. This is how you'll go through and make sure each tag is inputted correctly. Once again, in terms of a Siemens or an AB or Allen Bradley, it wouldn't be as big of a problem, but a click, it does have to be considered. Um, there's so many settings in here that I'm not going to discuss all of them, but one that is important would be alarming, obviously. So you configure alarms, the actual alarms in designer, like I said, like set points and such like that. But in um, the gateway, you select the pipelines. And if you want mail, email, or calling involved with it, you can configure that all from here. So this is the um, pruning I was talking about. The if data, if the alarms are too old, they will be omitted and deleted, which will be important. You know what I mean? So you don't have your stuff, your equipment bogged down as much with old data if you don't need it. That does have downsides, though, if you want to reference way back. But all of them are fairly easy to configure an external database. They can support internal, external. You just have to do external. You have to connect it. You have to make the database connection if you need that. But looking at the alarm notifications, you have email. SM, um, email would be SMTP. If you want to do calls, if you want to do an actual phone call, if you want to do SMS. If you're doing SMS, you require an AirLink device, which isn't all that expensive overall, but it's still something to be considered. There's a lot of functions that could be helpful. It's great for keeping track of everyone in maintenance or engineering on tap, like uh, up to date with what is happening. Um, you can add schedules even for who's on shift. So if it's only supposed to be for people on shift, that can make it a lot more efficient as well. So you don't end up being bogged down or have people getting texts you don't need off shift but as you can see this is tailor-made for your um company you can change whatever you want it's really what you make of it the sky is the limit this is the designer launcher it's probably complex looking but i'm using the perspective module as i was saying before vision is another option perspective is newer i believe but you have views which is each page you have style classes you have a lot of different stuff this is the main perspective thing so if you look, the slash is a home page. So I define it as home page, but you can make it any page. The slash is the first one to pop up because it's all URL based. If you if uh, you didn't know, that's how Ignition launch perspective. And then uh, I'm in the wrong browser. Swap it to Chrome, but it's all browser based. So you can pull up on your phone. They have an app as well but you can do it all via that so the base page is slash and the rest of them have their own tag you can define or own name you can define this is alarm history tab where you can configure it this was fairly easy you just had to change the target to make sure it was at the correct database or the correct journal because if it's not it won't record anything which can be a problem there's a lot of different settings to change here for the most part they're drag and drop you can configure small ones if you see problems 
or if you want to change them. The alarm status was even easier. That was a dra straight drag and drop. You don't have to target. It just looked at all alarms in the system and what their status were or was. So you, that's really easy. Drag and drop. You can put in a flex container, all of that. Um, this is HMI. This is a, I tagged, I ch um, bound it to the tag I inputted, the value, and I transformed it. My resolution wasn't very high, so I didn't want it to have decimal points because it wasn't uh, accurate. So I rounded it off um, and made sure it was nice and efficient, or it was uh, it was accurate. It was not accurate to 74.37, whatever, but it's accurate to 74, so have that left over. Um, it's not as big a deal now because um, it's in the thermo thermometer, but it was a deal whenever it was in the LED where it changed it. You can change all different, the increments of the t thermometer to have it all tied. The room temp, as you can see at the top, is tied to style class, so all of them are defined the same. So if I want to change all of them, at all the titles at the same time, I simply have to change it. This is a title for the main or the font for the home page. That's the font right there. So if I want to change that or any subsequent ones that use that style class, you just change it in the style class instead of going through each and every time. This is that blinking LED you saw initially. It's the same idea. You can change it, have multiple colors. It could go white to yellow to red. It could be whatever or clear to yellow to red, but it is just a, there's just so many um, customizable and it's easy to build upon that like you can make a user defined type of style class and just apply it and change it. So it's once something is changed, it's very easy. This is a menu one. You see how easy it is to drag out and then you can fit, configure it, name it, whatever. But the actual construction of screens is very easy compared to others. It just takes time and playing around with it. Once you figure it out, it's so it is very quick. This is a home screen I constructed. It's got an image, little flex container. Containers where everything is stored. So if it's flex, it grows with it to fill the screen, so that can affect it based on the different sizes or different browsers. Um, this is a different sub menu, as you can see. That some of them have another sub menu because you click on status and it comes with HMI. Um, one key is making sure it points. It has it is um, that it points to the correct view you want so it navigates to it and having a slash in front of it so it doesn't pop up an extra page because that is a problem if you don't have the page configured it'll pop up another one another tab um and another interesting one about this is i brought uh i connected it to the parameter for the current view so every time the title is auto constructed i don't have to input the tag or I don't have to input name any at all. Just the name of the view automatically pops up in that style. There's nothing I have to plug in. It all comes up by default, which is incredible. It's a huge time saver. Same with the nav doc. I mean, they both show up. You just have to change it and drag it in and to the, the initial and the defined type right here with the shared settings. You put it all there and then it just continues to show up automatically, which is super useful makes at making screens and constructing and adding on a breeze but this is a main screen as you can see this is where you choose all the docs you can see the tags in the corner it's an ignition isn't hard to use just figuring out where everything is located this is an alarm journal very easy to configure you have a below set point or above set point in between whatever it may be and if it's a certain thing you can set it and have the it'll have you can name it you can configure it all super useful you can check alarms and alarm status it's a very configurable um platform as you can see there's a lot of different tools it's not worth going over all of them this is just a small intro to what everything can do i just wanted to show future penn college students employers whoever it may be what ignition can do and what i can do with it it's a powerful software that should definitely be learned and taught for the future it's something that has a lot of potential it's not that expensive single licenses it's very um it's very affordable compared to a lot of different automation software which is why it's so appealing along with configurability